Hello, and welcome to another edition of Your Newsline. I'm Petty Officer Christopher Krukey. I'm standing here under some trees here on base, and perhaps you've heard that annoying buzz going around. I've been wondering what it was, so I did a little bit of research. Not bad. Like a horror movie, they emerge from their 13 to 17 year slumber underground, littering their insect shells on the ground and buzzing with the frequency of a roaring jet engine, ruining interviews after interviews. So when I'm riding my bike into work, um, along the way I usually take one or two shots to the face or upper chest region. This is a cicada, one of nature's stranger insects. Over the summer, their beady red eyes emerged by the millions across Crete. But other than being a recording nightmare and a bike hazard, cicadas are known all around the world as food. High in protein, low in fat, and no carbs, the strange insect is part of the diets of many cultures, including ancient Greece. Uh -huh. Would you guys eat this? It looks like a tajito. Heck yeah. No, I would probably not. Put it how it's cooked. You know, put some gravy on it, it should be alright. Well, if you were to cook this, how would you cook it? Well, probably stir fry. You could probably fry that, fry that little guy. Eat it like a little popper, a fish stick, except it's a cicada. It is said the plant-based diet gives them an asparagus-like flavor, especially when eaten raw or boiled. Now that we know a little more about the cicada, perhaps it's time to sit back and embrace the cicada song. Reporting for AFN, I'm Petty Officer Christopher Krukey. Okay, apparently the cicada diet is not the best for everybody. But with the PRT coming up in only eight weeks, here's Petty Officer Mike Wright with some more helpful hints. Monday through Friday, fitness instructor Sarah Hart is ready to pump through her work day. From a spin instructor to a boxing instructor to personal trainer, this woman gets her job done and still balances her home life. It's the energy that I can kick out while I'm training that I'm able to go home and try and hold it all together as a mom. I've got a lot of energy, I've got a lot of passion. I try, I try and stay grounded for my children. Between a minimum of four training sessions a day, how would anyone find time for themselves? I need time to meditate, because I try and meditate for about 10 minutes every night. Just to, not meditation, just meditation and reflection. Just to make sure that the day go good, did I achieve everything I needed to achieve, did my babies go to bed smiling. I try and be wholesome. You know, I, I, like my little baby calls me Mother Earth. I'm just trying to recognize situations from the day. And by the time I'm done with that, I'm, I'm I'm in Cuckoo Land, I'm gone. Reporting for Air Fence Suda Bay, I'm Petty Officer Mike Wright. Hmm, I could really go for some barbecue right now. Oh, Ooh. aha, coal, gas, Thunderstick 3000. Oh, yeah, it's getting lit. Huh, really wasn't expecting that to happen. And we're currently sitting here working on a new AFN Suda Bay webpage that we've been working on for the past week. Here's Petty Officer Sabrina Parker with a little more information. Oh! With social media taking over the communication world, American Forces Network continues to stay trained up for the next level. So the website that we're creating right now for Suda Bay will be the official presence for AF and Suda Bay. So you can um, post information and, and things that people need to know that deal with your community. And you can take the information that you perhaps put out on the radio and you can drive people to that site. The two-day course is designed to give an overall view on how to maintain the already established AFN site for the Suda Bay location. Uh, the big thing that the station, we call them web integrators, do is that they are responsible for taking the command information, stories, everything that your station produces and putting it on the website so that the audience has a chance to see it again. Yep. That's the address. For the military to have a presence on Facebook is very important because it's where everyone is that they want to target their message to. After completing the website training, the new web integrators will be able to upload all the stories done at NSA Suda Bay. And then that gives people a place to, to go to always have that at their disposal. Reporting for AFN, I'm Petty Officer Sabrina Parker. For the past 11 years, America's been engaged in a war on terrorism. 
Here's Petty Officer Sabrina Parker with an update. Fourteen sailors from NSA Sudabay's Security Department attended the Anti-Terrorism Officer course. Senior Chief Petty Officer James Mears from the Security Training Assessment Team out of Siganella gave the training. It's a uh, three-year refresher for all uh, individuals who want to become an anti-terrorism officer for their base. This week-long course is a PowerPoint-based training with hands-on tabletop scenarios. It covers facts and procedures that an anti-terrorism officer must follow. Most people in our field, they, they know this is a forever changing uh, threat that we have that's always coming into us, so they, they know to adapt on a daily basis. So. Petty Officer Second Class Christopher Parrish is one of those sailors who understands the need to adapt. Uh, obviously, a lot more stuff to come up with anti-terrorism force protection, so it's a lot of knowledge that we're getting out of it. Uh, glad I got signed up for it. I enjoy it. I really enjoy the job that I have. That's why I chose to go to NCIS. Reporting for AFN, I'm Petty Officer Sabrina Parker. In this edition of Destinations, we've traveled to Rethymno, which has a lot of culture and plenty of historical places, like this Venetian fortress, which was built in 1573. Now that you've seen the fortress, let me take you into Rethymno. things you'll find in Rethem though is the buildings, like this one that was built by the Venetians in the 15th century, then was a mosque, and now is a conservatory hall. And I think we found the Washington Monument over this way. So I really need a swan pastry. Oh look, there's a swan pastry. One of the things that's unique about Rethem though is it has pastry shops like this that just have fabulous pastries. making baklava. Uh, baklava is actually a series of layers of phyllo dough. There's between 10 and 50 layers and he's been doing this for 65 years. Pretty good stuff. And this is the end result. Delicious baklava. So we're going to try some here in just a second. So I will let you know how it tastes. Oh my god. It's like heavenly. It's definitely worth it. Yum. Well, it's been a great day in Rethymno. There's a lot of history, lots of archaeology, and of course, the great pastries. And it's only a 45 minute drive, so check it out. All right, the E4 and the E5 exam are coming up in the next two weeks, so I hope you guys are all out there studying right now. And stay tuned next week for more news and updates. And for all of us here at AFN Suda Bay, do whatever it takes to stay smart.